Welcome back to Burning Questions. Um, this is the third episode and the final episode of the challenge between Alec and myself. Um, so this episode, we're going to be asking each other questions um, about Quellfire products specifically um, and various things around our own products. That's right. And then at the uh, end of these questions, to make sure we've got an overall winner, we're going to be looking at a, another practical challenge. So um, in the last episode, um, you asked me the first question, so I think I'll ask you the first question on this one. So are Go you ready? It. Yeah, Go for it. Go for it. So because we're doing questions around the products, what is the standard compound product that we supply? Okay, so um, our standard compound, compound is the QF2 fire protection compound. Um, it's a sort of a general use compound tested in walls, uh, but primarily floors. Sure. It's a load bearing compound. Um, it's We've tested it in a huge, huge scope of different applications, haven't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. In comparison, we also have the QF1 and the QF4 fire protection compounds. Um, they are specifically for use on London Underground projects um, and London Underground have done a lot of their own testing on them. So we have very limited details for them. Um, but yeah, those those options are there. But the, yeah, the QF2 is our is our main compound product. Yeah, that's correct, that's correct. And uh, if anyone asks, we don't have a QF3. So that's just, that's <laughs> yeah. just one to remember yeah. on that. So. Yeah. yeah, so you've got the first mark, so that's good. Good stuff. So, so Alec, my first question to you. Um, which of our products are approved uh, for chemical compatibility um, for use around CPVC sprinkle pipes? Okay, yeah, good question. Uh, so currently we only have two of our products. So we have the Quellstop HPE sealant, that's been approved by both Lubrizol and Spears. Um, so they can be used for both manufacturers' pipes. So for out there, people might know Lubrizol use Blazemaster and Spears do an equivalent. We've been testing a wide variety. Uh, but very recently, we've had the QIF Fire Sleeve, which is our intermescent sleeve. Um, that's been uh, tested and approved for with uh, Lubrizol at the moment. And we are looking at getting it approved with Spears uh, in the future. But they're the two products at the moment. Yeah, bang on. That's, that's correct on both of those. Yeah, Yeah. no worries. So, uh, Glenn, um, my question for be with you is, what is the standard length of the QR, QRS 205 uh, slash 60? So, um, fairly easy question, I would say, Alec. Um, for me, anyway, the, the standard length of the QRS Tour 5 slash 60 fire sleeve is 180 millimetres. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, in comparison to some of our others, the standard lengths are 140 mil, um, like the slim sleeves, and then the, the QRS 220 by 90 standard, okay. uh, 140. Um, but yeah, always check the length. They yeah. do vary. Though we can offer... A custom right, yes that, if yeah if you if you've so. got a wider wall or um anything like that we we can manufacture them to suit to, to, to longer length so longer than 180 or 140 um so yeah we, yeah we certainly can do that yeah and the the links are on our product data sheets if uh, you don't remember from this video so check that out as well yeah, right, yeah. excellent good so um my second question for you i think alec okay yeah. um what is the total number of fire collars that we supply what that actually like individual yeah, one, including, individual including ones. all the sizes oh. and everything. <clears throat> oh, that's not oh, okay. <laughs> um, we got the Q, QWR 25. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, <laughs> 25. It's 24, 24, I think 24, roughly. Um, yeah. That's a bit, yeah. No, very close. Okay. Um, well, we've well, got the, yeah, go QWR. It. Yeah. QWX. Yeah. The Quellcast. Correct. So that's one, two, there's three. Uh, there's 12 QWRs. Yeah. Got three half collars, three quell. Cast and then the QW, I must have got the QWX from there's six of them. Yeah, six of them. Um, the ones you've missed off are the QWR rectangular collars for vent ducts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, not not a product we, we sell a lot of, but stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, they're 26 in total, I think. Okay, so, um, yeah. for all sizes, so yeah, nearly, oh. but 
Sorry, I'll let you miss that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit, oh, it's a bit tricky. Okay, all right. I'll try and get you back, right? Because yeah. I don't like being behind. So, okay. Um, um, okay, what is the durability rating of our Quellstop acrylic sealant? Oof. Um, I know we've got Type X on our intramescent. So for our collars and things like that, the sealant, acrylic sealant, did you say? Yeah, to be a quail stop acrylic. Is that type X? Yeah, so that's what I thought I'd catch out because oh. many people would think that'd be type Z. Um, the HP is type Z, but the yeah. acrylic is type X. So for any out there that don't understand what um, that is, is um, there's a way of testing products um, and it gives you a rating. Um, type X is one of the highest ones, so that means it's can be used in conditions where there's weathering, you know, cold temperatures and stuff like that. So our products um, are rated on that and they're always shown on our product data sheet. So a prime example is like Quellcast, that's a Type X because that's usually installed very early on in a project and it's going to be exposed. So you want to make sure it's protected for the weather, etc. like that. So yeah, I know I thought I'd catch it. I thought you said Type Z on that one. So, <laughs> yeah, so well that's done. good. It's four marks for you there. <laughs> so, yeah. so question for you, Alec. Okay. Um, we've just been speaking about durability. Um, so what is the life expectancy of our products? Okay, yeah, <laughs> you, you really want to win this episode. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a trick question, that, because there isn't really a straightforward answer. Um, so many, many manufacturers can sort of state a life expectancy of a product, but there isn't really an official standard. There is something in the OTA, EOTA, that allows you to do test things like durability is one thing. And that gives you a um, test up to like 10 years. So normally you can sort of give a guarantee of a, up to 10 years, yeah. but there is a document, which is the EAD. I can't remember the number because it's quite long. That talks about how it is expected that under normal conditions, products can last a lot longer than what's stated. So we, mm. we tend to say because our products don't have moving parts, yeah. um, you know, and then not really in any adverse conditions, you know, like the Antarctic or anything like that yeah. too much. Um, that they will last the lifetime of the building. So it depends what your building lasts. And to be honest, even that's uh, sort of uh, not really official science. So Batsy um, Power Plant, for example, which mm -hmm. a lot of people might see in the paper, they're being built into apartments. That's well past the life expectancy of the building. So they actually had to take away parts of that building to do a test to see if it still had, and it still could basically live another lifetime of the yeah. building as such. So yeah, so for most of our products, we would state it's the lifetime of the building, but the official thing is we can only test up to a 10 year period, yeah. but, but we do say further yeah. than that. So that's kind of the answer. Yeah, I good. Anyway. Yeah, no, so, that sounds good and certainly makes sense, obviously, yeah. as opposed yeah. to things like dampers. There's no mechanical moving parts or anything that could yeah. go, no, no, go it's wrong. Very, so very different. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, when people do ask about maintenance, the only thing I would say about maintenance is um, if people have access to the area. So imagine just above me now is a ceiling. The services penetrations are there. Our products are quite hidden out the way, but if anyone gets access to them, they can damage them mm -hmm. or you have remedial work or, you know, the, the BT or Skyman comes in to put some cables in and stuff like that. Just make sure you inspect it. And it's just more to make sure that it hasn't had any um, damage yeah. from external sources rather than wear and tear yeah. side of things. So yeah, that's about it. Yeah, good stuff. Well, that's, I think that's answered that well. So time yeah. for my fourth question. Okay, okay. Um, I'm trying to catch you out because you caught me out. So, um, okay, what's the standard length of our quell cast casting fire collars? Okay, you're not going to catch me out on that one, Alec. Um, so, yeah, yeah, the three sizes of quell cast, so we've got the 160, the 110, and then the 50 mil, they are all um, standard height of 250 mil. Yeah. Um, however, they can be extended or cut down depending on the slab depth that you've got on site. So they can be cut down to as low as 150 mil yeah. and extended up to 1.1 meters or something like that, um, yeah. which is very rare to be honest. That yeah, depth. That's but good. yeah, if needs be for thicker slab depths or thinner slab depths, they can be cut down or extended, um, but as standard they're 250 mil. Yeah, no, you've got all your questions right there. Yeah. So <laughs> Excellent, that's to be good. You and the practical. <laughs> Good stuff. So, um, yeah, fourth and final question from me to you, Alec. Okay. Um, name all the products that can be used on plastic pipes. Okay. Right. But just, just the name of the products, not every individual one, though. So, no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. So, the, just the. Okay. So, we've got, um, the, 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 obviously, the most common, the most people out there, we've got a QWR fire collar. Yeah. So, that's been tested both floors and walls. 
Uh, just plastic pipes, not ducts we're talking about. Um, different. No, yeah, just plastic, plastic pipes. pipes. <clears throat> um, so then we got the next, probably the next most, well, we've got the QWX, which was for large plastic pipes. Yeah. QWW wrap, very commonly used in floors with our compound. Yeah. Um, Firestopper's favourite, I'd say, is our Quell Stop um, HP sealant. Mm -hmm. um, that's tested normally on smaller diameter plastic pipes and CPVC, etc. Uh, and then we have the popular Quell coil. Um, and then the last one would be the QIF fire sleeve. So I'd say six yeah. in total. Yeah. yeah, bang on, yeah. Um, and obviously those products can all be combined with other products. In yeah, the yeah, that's, as well. it's, it's a tricky one because again, it depends on what your plastic pipe's doing. If it's a wall, a floor, size, type, you know, like CPVC can only use approved products. So yeah. it's why it's very important that I get a lot of inquiries and technical says, can we just have a fire color? It might be the right product, but it might not, because it might have something that's tested. Um, again, fire stoppers tend to use stuff like Quell Coil and HPE sealant more than the stuff which is more tended towards the m &Es, like the QWW and yeah. things like that. So it's, it's more important that they app give us the um, the application details and we can kind of advise which products might be better suited for yeah. them to consider on that. Absolutely, aspect, so. yeah. 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 So. Excellent, yeah, good. Well, that brings us to the end of the questions. Um, so leads us on nicely to the practical challenge. Yep. Da, da, da. Practical challenge time. <laughs> so to make sure we get a winner in this episode, we have brought in the uh, practical challenge, which we're going to do here. But before we talk about that, just a bit of controversy. When we reviewed the uh, answers to the questions, I actually got one of them wrong. So um, just wanted to make you know be totally honest and fair. So when we talked about the um, different products for, to for plastic pipes, it was actually seven. I uh, missed out the quail cast. Uh, not six so at the moment if we include all the scores from the three episodes glenn's in the lead with 15 and i'm in second place with 14. so this practical challenge is going to define the winner so for this practical challenge we are going to be installing the quail fire putty pad um, so just excuse the mess because these did have putty pads in them before in our demo board um, but we're going to be having a race see who can install the putty pad um, into these correctly so it should look something similar uh, to this Obviously this is a plastic box, these are metal, but that's what we're going to be doing. Before the video continues, just a brief disclaimer to state that the Quellfire putty pad should be installed in accordance with the installation instructions and the technical installation details based on our test evidence. Please don't use these installation videos as guidance on how the putty pad should be installed. So that bit of fun is over um, and again just to make the point that this wasn't uh, an installation guide please don't follow those examples it was very difficult reaching in at an angle so you can still see the box while we're doing it etc um, we'll have other videos that you can watch again use the tested details in the installation guide but yeah how did you find that glenn okay. yeah it was difficult first time i've ever <laughs> installed on um yeah uh, i mean let you be the judge what do you think i tried to do it as best i could yeah i think with what what we did is fair and again like i said read watch our putty pad video i've done a spotlight 
we've got our details, speak to our technical team. This was just a bit of a competition, just to end up end the, the first section of burning questions. Yeah. So like I said, before we did this, the scores was 15 to Glenn, 14 to me. And to make sure we get an overall winner, we decided whoever's done this in the quickest will get two points. So there won't be a draw. So Glenn, I believe you have the results. We don't know who's won or what the times were. So you can read them out and that's hopefully Team Alec. So, Alec dun, dun, dun. did it in five minutes, 43 seconds, and 62 milliseconds. Yeah, I know, it's those 62 <laughs> milliseconds that are going <laughs> to mess um, it up. So, we? yeah, five minutes and 43 for you. That's pretty bad. And I did it in four minutes and 43. Oh. <laughs>so there Sorry. we have it sorry alec glenn's the winner overall winner so with 16 no 17 <laughs> to 14 well done glenn so thanks alec. i'm gonna let you close out because i've I quit <laughs> <laughs> thanks yeah it was it was difficult as you say we were both against the clock um but i think we've we've made a fair effort at installing them um very much enjoyed it i think we've covered some good topics over the three episodes yeah. um should be some useful information in there and, and interesting so thank yeah. you very much and that's not the end of burning questions there are going to be future episodes we're just going to try a new uh, way of things so again if you've got any questions that you'd like us to discuss or other colleagues that are going to be joining us please send them into marketing or use the contact details that are going to be uh, displayed at the end of the video but from me from glenn thank you very much